please welcome the director of the film, Rachel Israel. I see two people have already taken their seats. I don't know what they're doing there, but you've all met Brandon and Samantha. Do we have any other cast in the audience? Gabe, come on up. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be shy. If you were in the film, come on down. I'm going to hand things over to Alison Kleiman, who's the director of the um, uh, Jack and Shirley Silver Center for S um, Special Needs here at the JCC. This is on. And has been working hard tonight, and um, it's going to somehow turn this into a panel. Somehow. <laughs> this is going to be a great panel. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the film. This is a real pleasure to be up here. We have some of the cast uh, coming down to join us while they come down to join us for your applause. <laughs> Will, Dylan, Zach, great job. And we have Amy joining us as well. <laughs> and so not only has Rachel Israel created this uh, incredible film, but this is now her second child who's 11 days old that's inside the sweater. 10. 10 days old. Nikki, I would never argue with you on numbers. Okay, thank you all. You did an incredible job. And I'm going to ask Samantha and Brandon and Rachel to stay up here. And the rest of the cast, please take a seat right in the front. Thank you. So, are you comfortable? Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, Rachel, why don't you just start out by telling us uh, what was the inspiration for this film? Yeah. Um, if I first got inspired uh, to make the film through my relationship with Brandon. Uh, we've known each other for, it's going on 16 years now. Wow, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> and um, actually Brandon came to Adaptations um, here at the JCC and um, he started a relationship that had a big impact on his life, and that was kind of the initial inspiration for the film. Um, I wrote a feature script based on that relationship. And then I was at the time a MFA student at Columbia, and I had the opportunity to make a short thesis. Um, and so we started casting for it, and when I cast Samantha, who, Brandon and Samantha, they didn't know each other prior to making the film, um, the, it really took on a new life. <laughs> And uh, we worked together to make, you know, decide who these characters would be. Um, and it became about how these two people would fall in love. Terrific. So uh, one thing I love about this film is that it's hysterical. And the other, on the other side, it pretty much very addresses, emotional. very emotional, and it addresses one of the most important questions we think about a lot here, which the mother talks about, um, what's going to happen to her son when she's no longer here? So yeah, that spectrum of emotion is pretty incredible, and um, I want to understand how you researched to make this such an authentic film. Um, well, it was, my research was kind of based in my relationships with the cast and um, learning who they were and then working together with them so that we could make kind of fictionalized versions of themselves. Um, so that was really my, my way in, and um, I f fell in love with them so much and uh, just wanted to be able to show these uh, remarkable characters, so. You got a good close-up there. <laughs> Brandon, are you ready for your question? Yes. Excellent. I just want to say, first of all, it is such an honor to have Madeline Marlin with us. Am I saying your name right? I mean, I loved her during the roast of Donald Trump, when she's completely dissing him to his face. I mean, that was great. I mean, I know the show Malibu Mohawks, but that's such a stupid haircut. It's something that Donald Trump won't even grab women by. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You got a question, Everyone. Allison. So, um, fortunately, we have many microphones here. Um, Brandon, why don't you tell us um, a little bit about what you think the purpose of this film is? I think the purpose of this film is to change the way everyone looks at the autism spectrum and stop painting these awful pictures of us as if we're a bunch of mutants that should be segregated from the rest of society. No, we're, we're not that. We're not 
a bunch of ugly people or or, or, or some derogatory person would say freaks. No, we're not. We're uh, just like you and me. We're, we want to love and, 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 and do all the yeah. things that... Can I add on yeah. this, please? I'm definitely, definitely on the same page with Brandon. We have the same hopes, desires, the same fears, and the same dreams that we hope to come true someday. We definitely want to show the world that we're just like everybody else, and we want to have all the love and, and attention, and def hopefully eventually find a loving relationship, um, and be lo not only be loved by other people as individuals, but be cared for and loved back, especially because I'm still single. Any, any man or my fans who are out there who are really, really sexy, smoking, and attractive looking, I'm, I'm perfectly one of the ones who are available. <laughs> Okay, everyone, we are going to have uh, two more questions this evening. <laughs> so, my next question is, um, speaking of derogatory phrases and behaviors, there's a scene where you get very intense with a homeless man on the street. What's that about for you? Oh, well, it's very simple. How would it's, I do it's that? It's very simple. <laughs> yeah, hold on, thank, that, that's okay. a lot better. It's very simple. You see, it is so obvious and transparent that David is looking into the mirror. You know, and when you think about it, when everybody, anybody says a mean thing in the world, they're just projecting how they feel about themselves. Like uh, when Donald Trump says that Mexicans are rapists. I don't know any Mexicans <laughs> that brag to Billy Bush. Okay, we're gonna switch now, you take this. <laughs> I felt like I felt honestly felt like a bum, and that's why I was saying all this horrible stuff. And and I felt like I felt like oh gee I'm a bum I'm a bum I don't I get nothing job and all that I'm such a bum and you know. Thank you, Brandon. And uh, for Samantha, yes, Allison. Tell me, um, what did you gain from this experience of doing this movie? Well, it was a real. It was beyond thrilling and wonderful experience getting to work with Rachel in this movie and trusting her and just doing a getting to it was like really important and had a lot of meaning getting to pe everyone who saw the movie tonight to, um, what do you mean um, um, can you rephrase the question yeah what did you learn from this film oh I learned that um, they uh, basically there's like love everywhere that I yeah. that I'm my characters um, I, I still don't, I don't get it. Can you rephrase it? Like the similarities and differences? I, what are you trying to, ha I still don't get the question. Can you help me, please? Sure. You learned how to act, right? What, I think, what did you learn from working on the film? Oh, like the experience? Yeah, the experience. Uh, I, it's, that's, I don't understand it. Tell me what was your, tell, sure. Tell me what was your favorite part about being a part of this film? To be honestly, I really don't have a favorite. I, I, everything really spoke from the heart and the soul in a very unique way. I just c can't really pick a favorite. Everything was just so realistic. Um, yeah. And being able to, that's what this movie was trying to convey. It was all very realistic. I, I just, everything was so beyond wonderful and just um, groundbreaking in every unique way and that's what the sh and basically what the movie is trying to convey the story of love and and getting love and attention hopefully others being receptive and be able to have others to love me back and be receptive to that that's an excellent answer very good we have one I'm sorry I got all political we shouldn't talk about politics or religion, but don't worry, it'll all be over in less than three years. So that's a great transition. Um, w your casting, in many ways, um, as we can tell tonight, that some of the actors played a role that was similar to who they are, and in other ways, they had to play roles that was dissimilar. So how did you, tell us a little bit about how you casted people for this, and what the process was like of working with the people who were acting in the film? Yeah. Well, the film starting as an inspiration, kind of coming from Brandon, he was, he was the rock of the project. Um, but we did work together, so we made the short film first, and we worked for a year 
together developing even that script and also on acting exercises. Rachel, you yeah. remember when I said to, in Boston? Yeah. When I said at first you were an art major, right? But then you changed it to film, and yeah. I'm not sure if I had anything to do with it, but yeah. you saw how <laughs> these amateur films even right. right before YouTube came out. Yeah. And then. Uh, so I was always making these films, and then he said, you know, you always make these films. I'm so inspired by your story. I want you to come work for me, and that's how Cupid James got started. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear Rachel's story now. Um, but Brendan and I worked on making a uh, fictionalized version of himself. So that meant what do we want to keep, what, what characteristics do we want to keep, and what do we want to tamper down, and what do we want to, you know, grow here or there. So it was something that we molded. Um, when we cast Samantha, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she brought so much uh, light and new energy and excitement to the project. Um, I now can't imagine it with anyone else but her. Um, and you know, we were, did a similar process. Samantha and I, like when we were developing the feature, we would do things like go to Central Park and grade the attractiveness of men walking by <laughs> <laughs> the boathouse. <laughs> We would do. <laughs> so we a, a lot of the basis for the character development was our conversations and just kind of finding where was there like deep energy within the actor, and taking that as the armature of the character, and then but you know molding and being creative so that the cast didn't feel like they were exposing themselves to the extent of it being autobiographical in any way, but that they could play within the realm of fiction but still be, you know, have the strength of things that were meaningful to them personally and that they could bring their personal experiences to. And so I did that with Brandon Samantha and then Will and Nikki, uh, we also worked for a year, yeah. for two years together in developing yeah. the feature. Oh, they, 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 they talk about you. That's okay, he, he, he's doing, he's all right. <laughs> we worked together, hi, we worked together, for, I'm just saying that we worked together for, for a couple of years also in developing your characters. So now we're going to open it up for two yeah. questions from our audience this evening. Any questions? If you dare. You don't even need a microphone, huh? <laughs> Here we go. I'm wondering if either of you have um, performed before or been in film, and if you haven't, is this something that you'd like to continue? Well, yes, obviously. I mean, I obviously want to. I obviously want to continue because I remember Rachel. Before I got into this acting stuff, you said, "Once you become an actor, your life will be so great you can forgive and forget all the right. negative things that happened to you." So I, I hope I don't. I, yeah. One second. I hope that I don't wind up doing it. If I was to do a job, saying, "Would you like some doing some lousy job?" Where I said, "We like some extra spit in your fries," mm -hmm. it was so I wouldn't be forgiving and forgetting. You know, cleaning the toilets of a Burger King bathroom, or I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I would like to add on, please, to that. Um, yeah, I'm definitely on the same page as Brandon. I definitely, I'm in a, currently in a mix and match of two different theater groups. I was in a Sparks commercial. I was an Epic. I'm still currently in Epic Players. Um, very neurodiversive, and Dream Street is looking just for special needs. So this gets a really gets a wonderful opportunity to show the world what I'm capable of doing and mixing and matching with my talents. Talents. I've recently been in a Sparks commercial for the, for the, for the amazing support of Aubrey and my ama amazing family I love so much to get me today and, my, and getting to achieve all my dreams, which really do, did come true. That was my, my, my major dreams for per, being a performing artist. Two theater groups, Dream Street, been epic. Um, and I was in two films, uh, very like uh, random, sudden, like random, we didn't expect in the good time Robert Pattinson feature, epic. All the epic players and I were like by random chance, we're out of, completely out of the blue. We're in, and keep the change in moving forward. I'm in my hopes to see it in movie theaters and to turn it, to go elsewhere. My, my greatest dream fantasy is Ray, for Rachel to turn it into, I don't know, a t something bigger, like a TV or a Perfect. pilot. Thank you. And I'm, and I'm still pursuing acting and singing. Great and answer. I'm, my next project is The Tempest. It was epic. And Mary Poppins for Dream Street. Perfect. I We're going to go with one more question I from the audience. I'd like to try something new. Okay. To expand myself. Okay, last question for the evening, and then we're going to, oh, we, okay, right here. So what was the process? Most of it was scripted or 
a great percentage was ad-libbed. How did you work it? Um, so uh, we had 97 drafts of the script by the time we went into production, and that's only since I started numbering them. Um, 97. Oh. It was like a, like a heavy budget for a to hit by a bus by like even in the principal's office. Uh -huh. You have no idea what's going to happen. So. Yeah, and I was just saying I how many drafts studied. of the I script there studied. were. I'm sorry, I should have studied. <laughs> um, anyway, so we worked very hard on the script, and um, actually all the cast except for Nikki read it. <laughs> um, what's that? Oh, you're right. You didn't read it either, Gabe. Sorry. Um, uh, Amy didn't read it either. Okay. I did. Never mind. Um, <laughs> I did. Guilty. Um, that said, we did play a lot around with the dialogue um, for the naturalness of the performance. The cast said things better than I could write them. Um, but we always had the backbone of the, the script there, and we knew what we were going for uh, in a scene. So there was the structure, and then we could play on top of it. So the good news is we'll have more time for questions up in the lobby where we'll have our reception and we'll have a band playing uh, one of our... Mary Rockers! Mary Rockers, one of our good friends, Marisa, and her friends will be playing. So hopefully you'll join us in the lobby for the reception where we can continue the conversation. Thank can you I, so much. Can I make one more... Say one Rachel more thing. has one more one thing more, to One say. more thing to say. We open in theaters in New York at the Quad Cinema March 16th. 13th. <laughs> March 16th <laughs> at the Quad Cinema. So uh, please tell your friends to come out opening weekend and, and support the film. We'll be there uh, me and the cast will be there to celebrate opening weekend in theaters. Thank you. Tickets go on sale this Monday. Folks, come join us upstairs. Um, for those who want to take the I'm stairs. I'm sorry, Solomon. Hold on, guys. For those who want to take the stairs, you could exit from the top and then take another flight up to your left. Um, our elevators sometimes go a little slow. Thank you for joining us tonight and come celebrate with us upstairs now and all week here. Tell your friends, grab brochures and help spread the word and join us for more wonderful films. Thank you very much. Thank you to Allison and our cast members here.